Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. It's excellent to be here in Dublin today. My name's Simon and I'm from Kemp. We've heard a lot today so far about the underlying SDN technology per se, but I'd, I'd now like to kind of switch the focus a little bit by giving you a very specific application view of SDN by telling you our little story. You could say it's our SDN journey so far. It's uh, very much an outside looking in perspective of the technology and it's based on pragmatic and incremental steps that provide tangible added value to our customers in the area of application delivery. But before we do that, allow me to say a little bit about who we are, what we do, our reason for existing, because it will most certainly set the context for some of the things I'm going to be saying. Kemp is a US company with its headquarters in New York City. We're truly a global company with a very strong Irish influence. With only 150 employees, we sometimes think of ourselves as uh, one of the smallest global companies in the world, although I'm sure that's not strictly true. We have R&D in the US, in Ireland, and in Germany, which is where I'm based. Kemp is an application delivery controller vendor, more commonly known as load balancing, which is the core capability at the, at the heart of most ADCs. For those of you unfamiliar with ADCs, they are physical or virtualized appliances that are placed in front of application workloads to provide high availability, performance, scalability, and security. So today, if you want to deploy an application workload, whatever that workload is, there is a very high likelihood that you will place an ADC in front of that workload to guarantee its quality of service. We have uh, 22,000 global deployments. 50% of those are in the US, 45% in EMEA, and 5% in Asia. And we are very, very customer focused and have an almost unreal 99% customer satisfaction rate, which we're extremely proud of. Kemp was an early innovator of software-centric ADCs based on open commodity platforms, namely Linux and x86. And we were also an early innovator in the space of uh, virtualized ADCs. So I think it will be significant to many people in this room today who are committed or are thinking of committing to network function virtualization and possibly also SDN, that 54% of Kemp ADC deployments uh, this year so far have been virtual. So we're seeing a huge amount of momentum building in the virtual space right now. So let's now come to the main part of uh, this presentation, which is about application delivery optimization using SDN. Now I must confess that I wasn't consciously aware of SDN until two or three years ago. I remember I was in a meeting with a group of US investors who were all throwing the SDN word around left, right and center. And uh, at first I thought this was a coded reference to some kind of a legal substance until I realized that SDN and LSD are not quite anagrams of each other. And then one of these characters turned to me and said, and I quote, Hey dude, yes, he was Californian, have you guys got the SDN thing going for you too? Unquote. Not wanting to appear like a complete and total turkey, I stated that we didn't, but agreed that it would probably be really cool to investigate. And so the first thing I did when I, when I went home was I googled the definition of SDN and this is what I came up with. SDN, Sandane Airport. Apparently SDN is a place you can go to. It's, it's an airport in the uh, northwestern part of uh, Norway. Here's a little picture to prove it. There it is on the map uh, and very much uh, a likely venue for uh, a future conference maybe. Now SDN is also, this, or was, the Scottish Daily News, a left-of-centre daily newspaper published in Glasgow. Here's a little picture to prove it once more, and what a bargain at just five pence. 
And finally, if you're using a German uh, web browser, as, as I do, then SDN is also the Schutzgemeinschaft Deutsche Nordseeküste. Uh, try saying that after a few drinks. And you can actually join the SDN and help protect the uh, German coastline. After a careful reflection with my team and revisiting the context of the conversation with the investor group, we came to the conclusion that they couldn't have meant any of the above. And they were probably, in fact, referring to software-defined networking. So with a healthy dose of skepticism, we started to take a closer look at the goals of SDN. And we really quite liked what we heard. We liked this idea of centralized control, providing a holistic picture of the physical network that can be exposed to the application. We, we liked the programmability, both the focus on automation, but also this idea of shared intelligence between the, the application and the network. But most of all, as a medium-sized software-centric ADC vendor, we liked the openness, because it's this openness that allows small agile vendors to punch above their weight and challenge the status quo and, and in doing so drive innovation. Finally though, reflecting on SDN as a whole, we felt that it might actually solve some real world challenges we've had with application delivery since the outset. Allow me to uh, present a simple picture to, to, to demonstrate uh, what, what I mean. So here's a classical load balancing configuration. At the bottom of the picture we have a farm of application servers on which the application workload is running. And at the top we have the application consumers, the tablets, the thin clients, the smartphones, the PCs, the IoT sensors, etc. etc. At the center of the picture we have the ADC which is binding the top and bottom parts together. And it does this by advertising the workloads that are running on the servers as a virtual service on the ADC. It, the ADC, then intelligently forwards incoming traffic to the most appropriate server. Now, if traffic drops below a low watermark, the ADC may gracefully deprovision a server to save cost. And if the service becomes too busy, then the ADC may coordinate the deployment of an additional server instance in order to maintain the quality of service. Thus, the, the ADC creates the illusion of there being a single, highly elastic application server. Now, the information it uses for making the intelligent forwarding decision is key to the overall performance of the cluster. And it's collected and stored in the AIB. And I want to be very clear here that the AIB does not stand for the Anglo-Irish Bank. In this context, it is the ADC information base. So the kind of things that are stored in the AIB include uh, information about the application's behavior and its needs, uh, the needs of the application consumer. We have up to the millisecond information on the health and performance of the application instances on each server, as well as the health and performance of the servers themselves. We also track all of the transport connections across the cluster. And it's, it's this information in combination with a number of other factors that determines where the next incoming connection goes. Now, uh, there's an inherent problem with this picture. The, the information in the AIB I'm basing my forwarding decisions on is mostly layer four to layer seven. So we're looking at transport up to application layer. The blue lines on this picture represent the logical network. Now, the physical network and its state is not visible to me as an application. I, I open a socket endpoint, I see a big pipe, I write into it, and I hope that the person who designed the network had a sufficiently large crystal ball and got it right. And the chances are he probably had to over-provision by, by a large amount. So I don't really know what's going on down there and depending on the criticality of the application that I'm hosting, I may need to know, I may have SLAs to meet. Now, I can glean performance-related information from the application layer, 
but it, it's messy, it's unreliable, it's non-robust, it's incomplete, and I still have no idea of the topology of the holistic network, not to mention having the ability to influence the network in any way. And it's this lack of visibility and control that can lead to a very poor allocation of computing resources, or in fact application engineers looking for problems in the wrong places. And the problem with the latter is that it may not necessarily be easy for application engineers to have uh, effective conversations with the people who built and operate the network, i.e. the network engineers, for all sorts of reasons. Besides the fact that they speak a very different technical language, they may be in different organizations on different continents, and they may actually only be able to interact with each other via a ticketing system. So there are all sorts of barriers, both organizational and technical, that we face here that are chipping away at the ability to deploy applications in an agile manner and deliver the expected quality of service. Now we've always had this problem, but it's now becoming compounded by the need for organizations to move to the cloud operating model, where CIOs are expected to deliver computing on demand and that includes not just compute and storage, uh, but also networking resources. So uh, let's now introduce an SDN controller with OpenFlow enabled switches into the topology and see what happens. Um, I still have my application view of the logical network. Those are the, uh, the dotted blue lines in the background, which I'm going to remove now in order to clean up the picture. But uh, more importantly, the SDN controller now exposes the physical network topology to me, which I can access via the northbound API. So I now have a reliable map, a correlation between the logical and physical network views. And this means that I can, for example, query in real time the SDN controller, asking it about the performance and health characteristics of the switch ports closest to my application servers. And I can now use this information to enrich, to refine the AIB to make even more decisions or more intelligent decisions with regards to traffic forwarding, thus improving the quality of experience, preventing the breaching of SLAs, and ensure a better allocation of resources. What's more, the application engineer now has a holistic picture of the network stack, physical transport through to application. So he or she can be very specific when engaging with the people who own and operate the network. Um, so we, we are doing this today. We, we launched a, a beta version at HP Discover just a few weeks ago in Vegas. Uh, our primary porting base for this application is the HP VAN controller. We have the support for the ODL uh, controller coming up very, very soon. And we're going to be extending this solution as we go forwards in the coming months. So just to uh, summarize um, sort of the main takeaway points from the little today's little talk. Uh, Kemp is taking an incremental and pragmatic approach to SDN that solves real-world problems for our customers today. A lack of network visibility leads to poor allocation of capital and operational resources. It results in needlessly deploying servers where they are, are not needed, and it leads to application engineers chasing problems in the wrong places. Gardner, for example, predicts that uh, SDN will reduce the provisioning time of new applications by 80%. If true, then that is very, very significant. Openness is key. At the end of the day, it's openness that will drive innovation. So let me leave you with a final thought. In, in my mind, it's difficult to see how organizations will be able to effectively deliver IT in line with the cloud operating model, this idea of private and hybrid clouds, um, without something like SDN. And I believe that ADCs will play a fundamental role here in future. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that our little story has been of some value to you.